Hello, Steve Stein here from LessonFace.com, and welcome to the next installment in my improvisation series. Uh, let's just start off by reviewing a little bit of what we did last time to make sure that you're caught up. What we talked about last time was learning all five of the minor pentatonic positions in A, and learning all five of the major pentatonic positions in A as well. And then we also talked about the notes on the sixth string with a shortcut to be able to memorize those. And then finally I talked to you about a technique that I call meandering, where you're just kind of brainlessly moving around the fretboard um, at a tempo, trying to see how long you can move to gain strength and knowledge of your fretboard to see how long you can actually last without having to stop. And then from the technical standpoint, what we did was we used a metronome to keep trying to bump up the speeds uh, to see how well you could do that meandering technique. So this month what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, drawing from those three categories again. So our first category is the absolute understanding category and what we're going to talk about this month is chords. Now again, you probably know all your chords, but it's just really important to make sure that we do know um, everything that we need to know in terms of standard chords that we play. Um, so let's just start with that. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to start making sure that you know the essential 10 open chords. And you can use other fingerings than I use and it's perfectly fine. Uh, I just want to make sure that you know those. There's six majors and four minors that we really need to make sure that we know. Um, ultimately what's happening is we're going to lead into uh, what's referred to as a caged chording system and that's going to come later. Uh, but right now what we want to do is we want to take those open chords and make sure we know those. So the first one I want you to do is an A major chord. And again, it doesn't matter what fingers you use. Okay. Make sure that you know uh, C major, D major, E major, F major, and again, if you play it as a bar chord or that, something like that, that's perfectly fine too. And then G major, and then we've got our minors. We've got A minor, B minor, uh, excuse me, D minor, and E minor. So 10 essential open chords that you should know. A, C, D, E, F, and G, that gives you six. And then A minor, B minor, D minor, and E minor, that gives you four more, okay? So for this month, I want you to make sure that you know all of those, again, on an absolute level, that there's no question when you go to make those chords, um, that you, you can make them comfortably and you can make them quickly. Uh, a couple quick notes about anything that you're learning, whether it's scales, whether it's chords, anything like that. The first thing is, to this absolute understanding concept, is visualization. If you can't see it, you can't play it. So if you look down and you're trying to see the five positions of minor pentatonic and you can't see them, you're not going to be able to play it. And even if you do, again, like I talked about last time, you're going to be seeing it with blinders on. You don't want to do that. You want to be able to look down and see, you know, a buffet of everything that you've got going on in this fretboard. Um, and we're going to see multiple layers of it as well. The first layer we've got is minor pentatonic. The second layer we've got is major pentatonic. And ultimately, we're going to talk about how to put those two together. Now we've got another layer, which are these chords. So we've got these open chords that we're learning how to play, okay? Three things I always tell students when it comes to chords or scales. Number one, visualize. If you can't see it, you can't play it. Number two, with chords, a technique called bouncing, where you take your fingers and you pick them up, and you hold them, and then you set them back down. What you're ultimately trying to do is teach your hand muscle memory. You're training your hand to make the shape. You know, a lot of times we'll make a chord and then we'll strum it for five minutes, which is great for the right hand, but the left hand really isn't learning much. If we take and, and get used to pretending like, for instance, my hand is super glued into this D major position, and I lift it up and I hold it, and then I set it back down. If they all go to the same spot, I'm doing it right. Because if you think about it, the real efficiency to chord movement, whatever chords they are, is being able to switch while you're in motion, right? If I'm on a G and I want to go to D, I don't want to wait till I get there to make the chord. I want to make it while I'm in the air, okay? If I'm making bar chords or whatever it might be, it's exactly the same thing, so bouncing. And then the third thing to try and work on with chords is, is cleanliness, trying to get them to sound right, strum the correct strings and all that sort of thing. So those are your, your essential 10. Then what we want to do is we want to move on and start talking about power chords. Okay, the two styles of power chords that you and I are going to be discussing are six string power chords and fifth string power chords. So real quick here, our six string power chord is going to be built using three fingers. I'm just going to go up to A again on the fifth fret, okay, but you should know those notes on the sixth string at this point. But I'm going to put my first finger on the sixth uh, string, fifth fret, 
I'm gonna put my ring finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string. I'm gonna put my pinky on the seventh fret of the fourth string. And when I play a power chord, I can only strum these top three strings. So I gotta make sure that these bottom ones are deadened out, and I do that with my first finger. I lightly touch those strings to deaden them. Okay, and that's how I get the sound of a power chord. Now some people like to play a power chord with two fingers instead. That's perfectly fine, you can do that as well. If you do it with just two fingers like this, okay, then what you want to make sure is that you're deadening out the fourth string as well, so the bottom four are dead. Now the nice thing about power chords, the reason people like power chords is because they're very easy to move around and the shape stays the same no matter where you go. So I can take the shape and go wherever I want, and I can also do the same thing on the fifth string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop either my two finger or my three finger power chord down one string, and now I'm gonna strum those three strings, or two strings, whichever one I'm doing. Uh, again, I'm gonna deaden out the strings underneath here with my index finger, and I'm actually gonna deaden out the sixth string with the, the tip of my index finger. So if I would accidentally hit this, you won't hear it anyway. Now, if you think about it, the reason we move into step two um, this phrasing thing is to learn how to put all this together, but we can't put it together if we don't know what we're doing. So what we've got so far are these open chords, the ten open chords, we've got these power chords on the sixth string and the fifth string, but these power chords we have to give them names, and that's why another reason why we're learning the names of the notes on the sixth string. So if I take this power chord right here, it's referred to as a sixth string power chord, and I go to the seventh fret with my first finger, this is a B power chord. And I know that because I memorized this note right here as being B. This is a G power chord, okay? This is an A power chord, this is an F power chord. So there's power in knowing what the notes are on your sixth string. So if somebody says, hey, I need you to play an F sharp chord, F sharp power chord, you know where F sharp is now from our conversation last time. You know F is here and G is here, so F sharp is in between. So you could make a power chord right there. That's absolute knowledge relatively simple in terms of playing chords, but it's still absolute knowledge. You want to be able to put those together. So number one, being able to make the chord, which is kind of a technical thing, and number two, being able to figure out where you're supposed to go, which is more of a, a theoretical thing. Okay, so we got power chords on the sixth string. Well, we've just learned how to do power chords on the fifth string as well. So it's time for us to start learning the notes on the fifth string. And again, you're going to have a chart that has the notes on the fifth string labeled. The fifth string, when you pluck it open, is A. So again, if we use one, three, five, seven, and nine, those dots on your fretboard, and again, if you don't have all the dots, it's okay. You can still think of it as odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, and nine, okay? We're gonna try and parallel those against the notes that we're playing. So when I pluck the fifth string, I hear A. But when I go to the first fret, which is a one, it's not B, it's A sharp. So I have to go to the second fret, this is B. So on the sixth string, this was F. Well, on the fifth string, I gotta move over to the second fret to get B. Then we're back on track. I got C at the third, D at the fifth, E at the seventh, and then eighth and tenth surround this last dot again, just like they did on the sixth string. So if you missed the last uh, series that I did on this, the first video of this, you're gonna wanna go back and watch that. Um, so we've got the notes on the sixth string, well now we're learning them on the fifth string. So we got A is open, B is at the second, C is third, D is fifth, E is seventh, and then F and G surround this next uh, dot, this last dot. So I want you to memorize those notes again, just like you did on the sixth string, exactly the same way. Absolutely memorize them, don't relatively memorize them. Uh, well, where is E, let me think. Because whenever you're under pressure or you're nervous, you're gonna forget those kind of things. So you wanna know exactly what they are. Now at this stage in the game, because you've learned the notes on the sixth string and you're now going to learn the notes on the fifth string, you also wanna cross-reference them. So if you wanna know where C is, find it on the fifth string and the sixth string. If you wanna know where G is, find it on the fifth string and the sixth string. Okay? As we keep learning new strings, we're going to keep cross-referencing all of those notes. So we learn to see them not only moving this way, but we see the relationships moving this way. That's how we start truly mastering our fretboard. Okay? So we've got our power chords, we've got our open chords, we've got our notes on the sixth string from last time. We've got the notes on the fifth string now from this time. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to start learning the um, bar chords as well. I'm going to give you a sixth string bar chord and a fifth string bar chord major and minor and seventh shapes. 
Okay, so we're gonna try and get through this as quickly as possible. Um, again, the great thing is you can watch the video as much as you need to, and again, you can always get a hold of me through LessonFace.com with questions about things. So, the three shapes I want you to memorize on the sixth string are the major bar chord, which again, I'm on A now, so this is A major. The minor bar chord, which you take the middle finger off. And the seventh bar chord, which is where you take the pinky off. Okay, now all of these shapes that I'm doing are actually coming from the E chord. E, E minor, and E7. All I'm doing is I'm adding this bar in front, which is raising the pitch. So these two worlds are clashing. The open chords that I'm learning and the notes that I'm learning across the sixth string are coming together and they're creating these bar chords. So E major becomes F major, becomes F sharp major, G major, G sharp major, A major, and so on, all the way up the fretboard. So major, minor, we take this one off, and seventh, we take the pinky off instead. Okay, then we move on to the fifth string. The fifth string you're gonna have major, minor, and seventh. And all of those chords are coming from the open chords A, A minor, and A7. So all bar chords are, are open chords that you're moving up and down the fretboard. That's why it's so important that you know your open chords, okay? Because we're gonna be moving those up and down. Now, needless to say, major and minor chords are way more important for the most part than seventh chords are. You know, we, we absolutely use seventh chords, but we use on a daily basis, we use major chords and minor chords quite a bit more when we're playing pop music or rock music or, or that sort of thing. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about that major, minor, and seven on the sixth, and major, minor, and seventh on the fifth. So you just simply choose what note you want, and then you choose the shape you want or the color you want. C minor. So I go up to C and I make minor. Or on the fifth string, I go to C and I make minor. And I get the same chord. I get the same chord regardless of where I go. So that's the next step for us is learning the power chords, the open chords, and the bar chords. Now a bar chord, one last note to make here, a bar chord and a power chord are the same thing. If you look at the power chord, which is the top two or three strings, and you look at the bar chord, all I'm doing with the bar chord, of course, is I'm barring across the rest of the strings, and I'm adding on this note, which is making it sound major or minor. So the key to remember about power chords is power chords don't want to sound major or minor. They sound like power chords. So a bar chord is the one that really is the bigger sound that makes it sound happy or sad or whatever it is you want to call it. Okay, power chords want to avoid that kind of sound. Uh, they stay a little bit, a little bit masked, if you will, when you're playing power chords. So that's what I want you to think about with all of the chords that you're learning. Now, if we move on to step two, which is the phrasing element, last time we were talking about meandering. Okay, well, we're gonna start moving into physically talking about phrasing. So this month, what I want you to do is I want you to continue doing the meandering that you were doing last time. Hopefully it's coming along using the metronome and everything. But I want you to start learning how to stop in various places to start creating phrases, starts and stops. Now again, we're gonna start adding colors to these things and, and talking about how it works. But at least for now, instead of just going what I want you to start doing is I want you to start thinking about how you're gonna move. Still not overly musical yet, but we're learning how to pause, okay? The question is, is when we pause, what kind of, what kind of phrases are we making? Are they all the same length? And that's what I want you to think about this month. Is everything that you're doing sound like the same sentence over and over and over? Or are you able to start and stop in various places to make longer phrases or shorter phrases? Different kinds of things like that. Be aware of that. Higher phrases, lower phrases. Um, we're gonna get into dynamic contrast and all sorts of things coming up. But that's what you're gonna start doing with your meandering now is start utilizing pauses. So you're gonna, you're gonna meander and then you're gonna stop. And then you're gonna meander and then you're gonna stop. But you're gonna think about the length of the, the phrasing or the meanders that you're doing. You're thinking about the phrasing of that, how long they are. And you're trying to varietize that. And also get it in your head that it's okay to stop for a while. Like if you go, sorry, if you go. Now 
you'll notice how the technique is fitting into this as well because, again, to be able to play at a certain tempo, I have to be able to alternate pick, maybe jump over a string or whatever. And again, we're going to talk about all kinds of these things. But I want you to focus on, on that element of, of meandering slash uh, technical prowess of being able to move across your fretboard. So let's focus on all of that this month. And again, please let me know at LessonFace.com if you have any questions about anything. I'd be more than happy to help you. So have a great day.